Kia ora friends, welcome back to my studio. I'm Gina and in today's video I'm going to be redoing the lights out of the labyrinth which is in this project right behind me. If you remember from a previous video I actually attached the wrong battery to the lights and blew all of them. That really wobbled me quite a lot. I have just basically put it aside until I have the confidence and motivation to actually get in and redo it. So let's get started. And so what we've got is a piece of cotton bud. So it's got a little plastic tube. The other thing that might work is cake pop sticks because they are also hollow. And I've cut this to two centimeters long. So I'm just going to push that up to the top. And this is going to be basically our flame. And then I've got a sequin underneath to add like the bottom of the candle to hold that all together because otherwise it's just going to keep flopping down. What I've got is a silicon earring bag and I've just threaded that through both wires and it's got quite a bit of friction on it so there's a little bit of tension on it and I'm just going to push that up underneath. So you can see here we've got the silicon earring back, then we've got the sequin, then the inner of the cotton bud and that is just all wrapped around the little nano light. So as I've done with the original or the first lot of lights, I'm going to wrap the wires with some embroidery cotton and I've just got this slightly off-white colour and I'm just going to tie it off at the very top just underneath that silicon earring back and then I'm going to wrap the wires around till about halfway down and then I'm just going to tie that off and for this time around I'm just going to group them into groups of four and three and just solder some wires onto it so that I've got some length coming out the top. And then I'm just going to group those together, bend them into shape and then add in the beadwork as well. So this is basically exactly the same as the other chandeliers that I created. And the only real difference is, is I'm adding this tissue paper to the top of them to give it a little bit more decoration and I just want these to sort of wrap around and come down as if it almost as if it's melted wax but I know that it's not melted wax and I'm just using a little bit of watered down glue to do that. Moving on to the peach I've just created the yellow center and I'm just pinching out a bite out of the peach and I'm just going to pinch away um, a bit of clay and then I'm going to add in the pip into the center. So for the pip in the middle, I'm just using a little bit of brown clay and then I'm just gonna push that into the middle with a little shaper tool and then just texture it up slightly just with some little pits to it. And then I'm just gonna use some chalk pastels to color the outside of it in a peachy color. And I'm just gonna use three different shades. The very light pink there doesn't really show up very well. It was really these other two shades that worked the best. So I'm just going to do the very outside of it, making sure not to get any area where the bite is. In the movie, one of the characters gives Sarah a peach to eat. And when she takes a bite out of it, she realizes that it's poisoned and it's got a worm in it. And what happens is that she gets transported to the ballroom, which is what this scene is here. Hey, Mr. Supervisor is very close. Love him. So this is the labyrinth worm. And I know he doesn't go into the ballroom scene. He actually goes in the actual labyrinth scene. But he's just too cute and I just really wanted to add him in because just seeing the little worm, you really know it's the labyrinth. So started off with the cheeks and now I'm working with the eyes and just with a little bit of armature in the middle of it. I'm pretty sure that the clay would have actually held up all by itself, uh, but just to be on the safe side, I didn't want to put all this work into it and then find that it sort of uh, fell over in the oven. I'm 
just going to put some snakes of clay over the back for the folds of the body then I'm going to blend those together just with a little bit of a shaper tool and for the little fluffy bits on his side I'm going to I'm going to make some out of some wool but for the really short pieces I'm just going to coil up some bits of clay so snakes of clay that I've just pressed flat and then I'm just going to press those and I'm just going to do two on the back of his head and then a couple down the length of his body and now for his scarf I've just rolled out a snake of clay and then just flattened it and then wrapped a bit wrap around his neck and then just added that other little piece on to give it the look like it's been tied around and that's him ready for the oven so once he's baked I'm just going to paint him with a little bit of a tan it's got a little bit more yellow in it than the actual clay itself I'm just going to paint him anywhere of areas that he's not blue for the blue I'm just using straight out of the bottle not mixing up any uh, shade so quite a nice bright vibrant blue and I'm just going to paint that over the top and then I'm going to mix up a little bit of purple just to add in some definitions into his stripes down the back of his body For his eyes I am just going to paint them bright red with this little tiny brush I have to use a little bit of a magnifying glass I, even with my glasses my eyesight is not that great for detailed work so the little magnifying glass definitely helps so I'm just going to put a coat of the red over his eyes and then I'm going to go back in with sort of an orange to give him sort of the uh, his iris and then the black pupil so the just a little bit of definition around the outside of the pupil as if he's got if is it as if his eyes are glowing Just to pick out some more of the details, I'm just going to put a brown wash all over the lighter colours of his skin. Uh, I'm going to just going to dab that off with a paper towel uh, just to kind of bring back the light colour. I just want to pick out some of those details in his face. Now for his irises. his pupils this is when he starts to get some character so for his hair I'm actually got some blue wool and I'm just going to untangle a little bit a little bit and then brush it out and the other thing that I do is put them through my hair straighteners and then I'm just going to take a bunch together snip it off so it's got a nice flat edge put a load of glue on it and then stick it to the side of his face so once that's all dried I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and just start to trim down the length of the wool and then once I'm happy with that I'm just going to get my tweezers and heat those up into my straightening irons so that I can create some mini curlers so I can twist around the top so that it's not sticking straight up and then just one last detail I just want to put a bit of UV resin over his eyes Enough. So the other thing I'm going to do is remake the clock. Now I've made two of these already and both of them I've made out of hot glue and while they work quite well they are it's really hard to get any fine details out of the silicon mold. So I've got these silicon molds I've got two of them and they've got all these different patterns in them. Once I've got a few of them I'm just going to cure what I've got on the plate there with a the heat gun just allows me a little bit more 
flexibility with uh, handling some of the finer details. In the movie there are multiple clocks. These are noticeable because the clock actually goes to 13, so there's 13 hours in the clock, which is the realm that Jareth lives in. And basically at the beginning of the movie he explains to Sarah that she has 13 hours to rescue her baby brother. And during the movie the clock is always speeding up time, or Sarah is losing time, so there's always this tension to do with the clock in the movie. So this is the clock face that I'm going to use and as you can see it's quite a bit of a different colour to the bright yellow clay. I wanted to use the bright yellow clay just to kind of give me a base to the gold. And so now I'm going to go through and start adding layers of paint to try and get down to that more antique gold look. And I'm going to use different layers of paint as well as a wash at the end. So now I can stick the clock face into the clock and it's a much closer colour, which I'm really happy with. And then one last step before I call it done is to add some UV resin to the clock face. One thing I do want to do is I want to paint this uh, grey roof out or the top of the lantern so I'm just move it, removing the hardware and then I'm just going to give it a spray coat of white and leave that to dry. So putting the whole project back together now so I've got my little peach and it's just going to go into the very corner as if Sarah has dropped it when she's been transported into the ballroom. The clock goes back on the pedestal. And then last, but by no means least, we've got the lights. So these have turned out so much better than the first round, which is not surprising. The first one is probably a little bit of a practice round. Then I'm just going to put the lid back on it again, so now it's all white. And one thing that this does is it makes the characters really stand out in the project. And then we're going to put our little worm in a very pride and place right up the top, so he's not going into the ballroom, but he's sitting on the outskirts just as a nod to the labyrinth. So if you find this video helpful, hit that like button and feel free to subscribe to the channel. Have an awesome week everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.